Hi everyone, I'd like to talk today about rewards uh, just in terms of the um, incorruptible building material that uh, we are to build with on the foundation of Christ. Uh, so gold precious, sorry, gold, silver, precious stones versus wood, hay and stubble. So in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 14, I'll just read it. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay that than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man builds on this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive reward. So um, we're to build upon the foundation of Christ. Um, you know, our works are tested um, and if they are gold, silver, precious stones, when they're tried by fire at the rapture, they will not burn up. But anything that is of our flesh, wood, hay and stubble, that will burn up. Um, and, you know, a lot of people have... <laughs> if you look at videos from worksy people or even work sanctification people they love to come up with lists of well you can do this and you can do that and you can do something else and here's my list of of things you can do to get rewards in heaven and they're just all works of the flesh it's like what can i do f for god to get my brownie points in heaven um, and it's it's walking in the flesh not in the spirit and so what they're actually telling people to do is work, uh, is to build with wood, hay and stubble. And unfortunately, all of that's going to be burned up. So we need to understand what gold, silver and precious stones is in order to be building with the, the, the correct building material. Um, and when it, the verse 14 says... Um, if any man's work abide, gold, silver, precious stones, uh, he shall receive rewards. So it, because it hasn't uh, burnt up in the fire, whatever is gold, made of gold, silver and precious stones remains. And that is your reward. So we need to understand what that is. Um, we can see that in uh, Revelation 21, uh, what remains after the, you know, in the fire burning what remains from that is part of the new city jerusalem the habitation of god and i john saw the holy city new jerusalem coming down from god out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband so the bride you know body of christ and i'll go on and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And 18 to 21. And this describes the, the new city, what it's built from. And the building of the wall of it was like jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, and the seventh chrys chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysophrasus, <laughs> sorry, the eleventh a Jacinth, the twelfth, and Amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every 
in every several gate was of one pearl, and the, sit and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. So yeah, you can see that gold and a whole range of precious stones are part of the, the building um, of the new city Jerusalem, which is the body of Christ. So you can see that we, we have that um, gold, silver and precious stones as part of us remaining as our reward and we make up the building of the new city Jerusalem as the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. And that's why it's described in these terms. Um, I've seen videos of, well not videos, an article of you know, people trying to t talk about gold, silver and precious stones and they just think it's just like, they either take it as literal gold, precious stones and, and silver and that's what we're going to see in this new city Jerusalem or they try and equate these materials with works of the flesh. Um, so, First Peter 1 describes the gold, silver and precious stones and that they are of God um, and not of man. So let's read it. Um, and as you can see, I've been highlighting stuff that stands out as you know what I'm talking about. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. So our reward is our inheritance and it's incorruptible, undefiled, and it does not fade and it's reserved in heaven for us. Um, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And that refers to the, to the rapture. Um, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So the appearing of Jesus Christ is the rapture, of course. And our faith is compared here to gold, even though... Um, you know, earthly gold, even though gold is not considered a perishable metal um, in terms of the whole universe and beyond, um, the, the, the universe is perishable. Everything in it is perishable. So therefore gold is actually perishable, even though to us it seems like an un imperishable metal. Um, so our faith is more precious than gold. Uh, so it's more precious than anything that's imperishable on earth. And our faith will be tried by fire, which is, um, you know, the, the gold, silver and, and precious stones will be tried um, with fire at the rapture. Um, and they will remain. So our faith is remains because it's the gold and that's what happens at the rapture. Um, whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied the grace, prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Now I highlighted that because um, what we receive as reward is by grace. And because it is of Jesus Christ, the gold, silver and precious stones 
oh, I'm getting to that point, but it's all Jesus. And it's, we don't work for, you know, we don't do works of the flesh in order to gain reward. Um, we put to death our members and rest and cease from our works of the flesh, reckon our old man dead, and we walk in the spirit. And when we're walking in the spirit, God is doing his works through us. And those are what uh, are gold, silver and precious stones. And that is the reward we receive because it came from him and he gave it to us. Um, now, it came from him. He's the one that does the work and he rewards us even though we didn't do it. It was all him that did it. Um, so you can see it's, it's by grace that we receive the receive reward not by works God doesn't owe us anything but he chooses to reward us for his work in us um, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it tested testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which the angels desire to look into. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that's that same point again, that the revelation of Jesus Christ is another way of saying the rapture and and what we receive at that time our reward is grace by grace it's not for anything we have done of ourselves in the flesh it's only what he has done through us that he chooses to reward us for even though we didn't do it um, as obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance but as he which hath called you in his holy, and called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. For it is written, be ye, ho be ye holy, for I am holy. Uh, just a point on that. I guess people will look at that and say, oh, well, look, we do have to uh, do things. We have to work hard to be holy and everything. But have you tried to be holy? You probably failed if you did. The only way to be holy is to walk in the spirit. I mean, we are holy because we have uh, the spirit of Jesus Christ inside us, joined with our uh, spirit, our reborn spirit, and it is holy. But uh, if you want to talk about holy behavior, then the only way to achieve that is walking in the spirit. There's nothing we can do in our flesh to be holy. Um, and if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So again, it's, it's com, you know comparing silver and gold, which we think of as imperishable, because you know if you stick it in fire, it doesn't perish; it just it's refined. Uh, but in the scheme of things, anything, any materials. Earthly materials are perishable because God can just take it out of existence. Um, but so when we're not redeemed with incorruptible, but with no, with corruptible, we're, we're redeemed with with incorruptible things. Um, and the incorruptible thing is the precious blood of Christ. Um, who verily was foreordained, foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, whom by him do believe in God, 
that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory and your faith and your hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth, obeying the gospel, through the spirit unto, unto unfeigned love of the brethren, that is believing in the gospel for your brethren who also believe uh, the gospel, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, which is believing that others are saved by the same gospel that you are saved. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. So we're born again of incorruptible seed um, and the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So these things are incorruptible and, and live and abide forever. In comparison to, for all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. So that high, bit highlighted in orange is the works of the flesh, anything from man. Um, it's, it's perishable. That is the wood, hay, and stubble. It's going to burn up. Um, but the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So gold is our faith, and silver is, represents the redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. And precious stones uh, is the living stones for the building of the new city Jerusalem which is believers who are transformed by the divine life of the spirit of Jesus Christ in us. And um, in this first Peter chapter number one, um, we see the things that are incorruptible are described as being the inheritance and the seed. Uh, and the things that are precious are faith and the blood of Christ. And we know faith and the blood of Christ are gold and silver, so they're precious. And what liveth, liveth, abideth, and dureth forever is the word of God, the gospel. And all of these things, the inheritance, the seed, um, faith, blood of Christ, the word, the gospel, they are all the risen Christ. Um, and any, but anything that comes from man withers and fades away, but anything from God endures forever. So understand that the works of the flesh, your own efforts, your list of things you think you can do to get rewards, those are all wood, hay and stubble. They're of man, they're of the flesh. They, uh, even if they seem good, like, you know, charity work or... Um, trying to sin less or um, reading the Bible. <laughs> reading the Bible sounds good, but it is not automatically walking in the flesh, I mean in the spirit. Um, people, I've heard people say that reading the word and praying is, is walking in the spirit, but it's not if you're approaching the word with a mindset of um, looking for things to do in the flesh, uh, looking, uh, not, not trusting that everything we have is from Christ by faith, but uh, putting an onus on the believer to perform uh, in the flesh and um, to manage their own performance, their, manage their sin, um, all that sort of thing is... Uh, wood, hay and stubble and it will fade away and it will be burned up at the rapture. Um, prayer and reading the Bible can be gold, silver and precious stones if it's walking in the spirit when you renew your mind in the truth and when you read the Bible you, you read it through the lens of the truth of the gospel, the gospel of grace, where there is nothing um, that you can do and you are weak and you approach God 
for everything and his blood uh, covers all your sins and he is the one that works in and through you. Okay, I'm starting to waffle, so I'll stop there. Um, I hope that blesses you. Bye.